Hey, everybody. This is Heidi St. John. I hope you guys are doing great. Today is Mailbox Monday, and I am coming to you today from Kona, Hawaii. And so if you hear some birds or some lawnmowers in the background, just picture yourself in a tropical place because that's where I am. Stick around. I think you're going to be encouraged. All right, you guys, so I'm glad that you're here. Today is Mailbox Monday. I am, as I said in the introduction, I am uh, coming to you today from Kona, Hawaii, and Jay and I are out here celebrating our 33rd anniversary, and we've got some uh, some of our family is out. So Jay's mom is out, and our daughter, Sailor, and his sister, and my sister, Haley, and her family. So we are just uh, blessed beyond measure to be here staying with some wonderful uh, friends who've been very hospitable to us. I had decided to, we were going to come back last week, but then we had an opportunity to stay a little bit longer. And so we decided to take them up on it. And so I've never been to Hawaii and we are just having the time of our lives. The other day, I want to say it's been, well, let's see, at the time of this podcast airing, it will have been a few days, but we went out into the Pacific Ocean on paddleboard. So I've never been paddleboarding, uh, never really been snorkeling. I've done a little tiny bit, but um, not like we've done here. So we've been out here almost every day snorkeling and paddleboarding and and uh, hiking and doing all the things because the temperature here in Hawaii is about, uh, it stays at about 10 degrees all day long. So it might get down to like 75 at night and might get up to 85 in the morning, but the temperature is very stable. One thing I will say, you sunburn out here because you're so close to the sun. And so the second day I was here, even though I had a ton of sunscreen on, boy, howdy, did I sun did I sunburn. So uh, lots of lavender. I smell like a lavender bomb, and it's fantastic. But we went out into the Pacific Ocean, and uh, John, who was showing us how to paddleboard, and you know, here, you know, I'm 50. What am I? 52 years old. Never, never been paddleboarding, and so I was a little bit nervous. But once we got out there, it was just, it's so peaceful and so um, spectacular. You guys, the the creation all around us. I mean, certainly this is true everywhere. I mean, I can think of things in the Pacific Northwest where I live that are mind-numbingly beautiful. This is mind-numbingly beautiful just in a different way and just reminds you of the creativity of God and that God is in the business of making things new. And so... Um, I'm entering a new season in my life right now, getting my speaking season back on track. So if you are interested in having me come out and speak to your event, I will link back to how you can invite me in the show notes today. Uh, We're trying to fill up my schedule for uh, the next speaking season. And that starts that um, that process really starts right now. So I'm out there on a paddleboard and John says, oh, my goodness, because he's got scuba deer. So, you know, he's down uh, scubaing underneath us. And says, I saw some giant mantas, some manta rays. So jump off our paddle boards and I put my snorkel on, put my face in the water. And it was, I just, I couldn't help it. You you cannot help but praise the Lord when you see the breadth of his creation and what he has done. It's just amazing. So uh, for those of you who've been praying for our family and just for the, the a time of just restoration and healing, and I'll talk about this more as the months uh, go on, but but God's doing something really, really uh, beautiful in in my heart while I'm out here. So I read Psalm 124 the other day, and it's a song of David. And I feel like the Lord just really drew my heart to it because when I came to Hawaii, I was really just on, I felt like I was just on some sort of um, life support, spiritual life support, just emotionally drained, physically drained, spiritually drained, tired. And we spent just a couple of days just being quiet, uh, Jay and I did. And I was reading my Bible and the Lord brought me to Psalm 124. This is what it says. If the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel say, if the Lord had not been on our side when people attacked us, they would have swallowed us alive. When their anger flared against us, the flood would have engulfed us. The torrent would have swept over us. The raging waters would have swept us away. But praise be to the Lord who has not let us be torn by their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the fowler's snare. The snare has been broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And as I'm out here just surveying the land and the obvious uh, beauty that's around me reminds me that we really do serve the maker of heaven and earth. And that is the God, men and women that you serve. So no matter what it is that you're facing right now, no matter what you're going through, you serve 
a God of miracles, the God who made the the giant manta rays in the ocean and um, all the fish from Finding Nemo. I've seen every single one of them now in the water, which is pretty amazing. Uh, God made them. The birds that the sing, the majestic mountain peaks, uh, God did that. And we serve an amazing God. And he says, you belong to me. And I'm the one, who, I'm on your side. And I love that he said that if the Lord had not been on our side, when people attacked us, they would have swallowed us alive. The flood would have engulfed us. The torrent would have swept over us. The raging waters would have swept us away. But praise be to the Lord. The snare has been broken and we have escaped. Well, the first snare, of course, the snare of death, that uh, as Christians, once we become new in Jesus, uh, our lives are changed. We're right down the street from uh, the uh, Christ for the Nation School here, the YWAM Missionary Base in Kona, Hawaii. And we've had an opportunity to talk to some amazing people who are here just serving the Lord. And it's wonderful. And I want I want you guys, you know, people who listen to this podcast to really be encouraged because God's in the business of making things new. That's what he does. And if you need a little bit of time to um, get away, whether it's, you know, whether you can get away to Hawaii or not. I mean, it took me 52 years to get here. So I realize not everybody can to make can make it here. I cashed in a lot of airline points to fly <laughs> to fly here. Um, but I would just I want to encourage you that no matter what, no matter what the season is that you have just been through, God is always in the business of restoration. He wants to make things new. And so as I look at your questions here at Mailbox Money, which by the way, um, we're back in the saddle. So if you guys want to send questions to us at Mailbox Monday, remember the, the key, keep them short, sweet, and to the point. You can go to HeidiStJohn.com forward slash Mailbox Monday. Fill out that form, and that is how you can get your question answered on the air. But I just want to encourage you that as we move forward, um, in whatever, you know, whatever it is that God has ahead of us, and, you know, in the weeks that come, I'll probably get back into talking about the news there are some things that the Lord's laid on my heart that I've been writing about that I really want to bring to your attention because my concern, my ver- I am gravely concerned for the condition of the church and our lack of knowledge of him. It's the reason I started MomStrong International. It's why I care so deeply about the church getting off the bench and onto the battlefield, engaging in every sphere of influence. I don't care what it is. It could be medicine. It could be, it could be education. It could be politics, whatever it is. God's people are required. They're needed right now. I mean, imagine that we're on the front lines and the church is the Red Cross and had the Red Cross said, yeah, never mind. We know we don't care about that. You, 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 you know, you guys do you. Well, the church is the Red Cross. It's it's God's Red Cross, not the woke Red Cross, but God's Red Cross for the culture. And and we need to engage. But I just want to encourage you in the in the days to come, no matter what happens, our days belong to the Lord. I went to a church service here at Livingstone's church here in Kona, and uh, there, it's, it's beautiful, right on the ocean. I mean, you sit, basically sit and listen to the pastor talking, and you're just watching the surf on, to, you know, surf to, to your right and the pastor, you know, to your left. Anyway, he was talking about a little bit about the end times, and he was saying, you know, he believes, as we do, that we are living in the end times, but we can become so heavenly minded that we're of no earthly good. So even though we know that the signs are all there and we'll talk about those, I'm going to have Pastor Phil come back on because there have been some amazing, astonished developments in the world. And all the pieces are in place right now for the return of the Lord. But the Bible says that we're not going to know when Jesus is going to return. And this pastor so rightly pointed out, he said, listen, we can talk all day long about the return of the Lord and the last days and all that. And we don't know when Jesus is going to return. Is it going to be in five months, five years, 50 years, 150 years? We don't know. But what we do know is that we, that we are living in the only days that we will ever have on this earth. And it, it was so impactful. You know, um, I will remember that for the rest of my life because we're here to do something. We're here to get off the bench, to get onto the battlefield, to engage and to follow the Lord to be, as Paul said, his ambassadors, right? That's what Paul said. You are therefore Christ's ambassadors as if he were making his appeal through you. And I loved that um, Paul said, it's like God is making his, God is saying through the church, come back to me, right? I am the maker of heaven and earth. I am your help, a very present help in time of trouble. I am the Lord, your helper. And we have a message of hope and healing. And we know that the Lord uh, is on our side. So I want you to be encouraged today as you uh, as you think about where God has you and what he might want you to do in the months to come. Uh, this is a great time of year to sort of re- refresh and make a plan for the fall and falls right around the corner right now. You know, we're, we're coming up 
uh, to the end of August and things really get hopping in the fall. So uh, I'm going to take a quick break. And when I come back, I'm going to answer some of your questions. All right. So before the break, I was talking about Psalm 124, uh, just saying that the Lord is on our side. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, this extraordinary God who uh, does not slumber. The Bible says he does not sleep. And as I'm looking through the questions that are coming in for Mailbox Money, I just I think that's a really good place to start because I think sometimes we forget what it is that God um, wants us to do. We forget to ask him because we get so wrapped up in the day-to-day living. And remember, we don't know when the Lord is coming back. We don't know. We, 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 know we're, we know we're living in the last days, but we are living in the only days that God will ever give you and me. And our time is very limited. The Bible teaches us that uh, the grass is going to wither and the flower is going to fade, but the word of God stands forever, that our days are limited, that our time here is precious, and we want to redeem the time. That's what the Bible says. Lord, help us to redeem the time. So uh, I'm going to jump right into your questions. This one comes from Kate in Massachusetts. Hey, Kate. Thank you, girl, for writing in. I appreciate it. She said, Heidi, do you have any suggestions for a new church or for new churchgoers about how to find a church that isn't woke? Yes, this is a great question. A lot of the questions I'm getting in, and I hope you guys are following my Instagram account because I'm I'm posting videos and you're going to see more and more of this woke culture has absolutely infected the church. It's the reason I started MomStrong International. I'm going to give a really quick plug for it. I am going to be jumping back into the saddle. I've taken 18 months off over there for my run for Congress, but I'm jumping back into the saddle. I will be the primary teacher uh, for the foreseeable future over at MomStrong International, writing those Bible studies and teaching uh, once a week. And so I want to just encourage you, jump in. Now's a great time to join MomStrongInternational.com. All right, so so here's my my main my main suggestion. The first thing I always tell people to do when they are looking for a church is to go to the church's website and see what does the church value. Above everything else, the church should value what God values. It should have a very high opinion, a high, a hold scripture in high regard. So rather than, um, and I don't care, you know, some people will argue with me and say, well, you know, they need to go through the Bible, you know, step by step through the Bible. Uh, Calvary chapels are usually very, very good at that. But I don't care if someone wants to teach topically as long as they are teaching from the word of God. So like, for example, right now is a really good time. And I'm going to, I'm writing an entire study on this, on identity and what God says about identity. Uh, God has a lot to say about it. So if you wanted to teach on that, and if the pastor wanted to teach on that, and he was willing to take his church to the Bible and what God says about identity and male and female and who we are in Christ and what our purpose is on this earth, well, then I th- I say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Here's what you don't want. You don't want, if if your if the church website has any of these words, diversity, equity, inclusion, run for your life. If they have, um, if they say, you know, in uh, everyone is welcome here. And what they mean by that is we embrace the LGBT agenda, run for your life. You want a church that will not sacrifice truth on the altar of a misguided mercy. That is the main thing. And so does God love the LBGTQ community? Absolutely, he does. But God has a standard for righteousness. The Bible says that we're all sinners. And the churches that uh, that I would recommend people going to, those are the first things that I look for, a high view of Scripture. Sometimes you're going to read Scripture and you are going to be convicted. I am going to be convicted. It's why last week I re-aired Jessica Smith's interview about yoga. And as I predicted... You know, we got a lot of hate mail because there's a lot of Christians who are like, I'm doing yoga. Nothing's wrong with that. Well, that's fine. You're entitled to your opinion, but I just took you through God's word and made a pretty, pretty strong case why you're wrong. You know, we don't like to be convicted of sin in our own lives. It's much easier to look at someone else's life and point out all the things that are wrong with them. And I, I want to sit under the teaching of someone's going to make me think. I want to sit under the teaching of someone that's not going to coddle me, someone who's actually going to dive into the word and actually teach it. Those are important things to me. So. Uh, we and the other thing, obviously, I mean, this kind of goes without saying, but I probably should say it. You want to find a church that recognizes, that holds the gospel in high regard, so that the wages of sin is death. That we need a relationship with Jesus Christ. So we're teaching our way through the Bible, teaching the Bible, holding Scripture in high regard, keeping the the gospel paramount, understanding uh, what it takes to be saved. There are a lot of churches that you know people are coming out of right now have no idea that the Bible teaches that they need to repent uh, and come to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm, I'm in need of a Savior. Forgive me for my sin and come into my life. Wash me and make me new. Um, this needs to be, uh, I think, of utmost importance. Also, you know, I look for churches that are very friendly to families. And by friendly, I don't mean 
you know, we're just, we're going to drop off our kids and have the youth pastors takes the teenagers and the children's pastor takes the little kids. Um, I, I don't worship at the altar of a family integrated church either. I, I love a, a healthy church a children's ministry, but make sure that they're not just in their playing games, that they're actually taking the time that you're entrusting to them with your children and they're teaching them how to rightly divide God's word, teaching them the scriptures and teaching them that God loves them and has a plan for their lives. That can never be as something that is just shoved to the sidelines that has to be, you know, right up there and super important. So Kate, I hope that helps. If you guys have other questions more specific, I mean, I, honestly, the the woke thing, and I'll be talking about this more uh, in the months to come, in the days and the months to come. As I said, I'm going to be teaching on identity over at MomStar International. I think you guys are going to love it. Um, but run from the woke church. Run from a church that doesn't embrace God's word as it's written. Run from a church that can't that can't say that God that God it would be in defense of the unborn if they don't know what that is. I heard I listened to a woman preacher the other day say, you know, God, thank you that you that you fearfully and wonderfully made us with bodily autonomy. <laughs> like I was like, uh, eh. like no, he didn't fearfully and wonderfully make you with bodily autonomy. He just made you fearfully and wonderfully in the image of God. And the Bible repeatedly says that to take the life of an innocent human being is something that God uh, calls murder. And so these are the kinds of churches that I would just encourage you to be very, very careful about. Anonymous in Kentucky wants to know my thoughts on plastic surgery. She said, Heidi, I want to let you know, I appreciate your words of wisdom and encouragement and all you are doing for the kingdom of God. Thank you so much. My question is, what are your thoughts on cosmetic surgery? I've struggled with wanting to get rhinoplasty done for several years now and have consultations and planned surgeries, but cancel at the last minute. I found a Christian surgeon who's been very sweet and understanding and very honest and not pressuring at all. We technically have the money and it's something I've struggled with because my nose is wider than I prefer and it affects my confidence. So um, first of all, um, I would just encourage you, like I said, I'm going to be doing a an entire series on identity, which I think is going to help because Satan's after your identity, right? The first thing he's going to do is question the word of God, which is why I said churches should have a high view of scripture. Remember how did Satan tempt Eve in the Garden of Eden? He said, did God really say? Remember that? The second thing he's going to do is try to make us believe that we are who the world says we are instead of who God says we are. So do I have a problem with cosmetic surgery on his face? Absolutely not. I don't see anything in scripture that says that that's a bad thing to do. I will encourage you though, the culture is very, very hard. I think particularly on women, but we have, I think, a much higher view of the way that we look than we should have. Now that said, years ago, um, I don't know, maybe it was six years ago now, I got Invisalign, you guys. I straightened my teeth. I straightened my teeth in my late 40s because they just, I just did not like my smile. And here I'd gotten, you know, braces for my kids. And um, and Melissa said to me one day, because I had an opportunity to get Invisalign at a really good price. And she was like, Heidi, why not take it? You, you're always like trying to hide your teeth and never liked your smile. And so, my goodness, that was one of the best decisions that I ever made was to get was to straighten my teeth. I just was so happy that I did it because now my smile is really big and I really love my smile. Um, and so I think, you know, you want to do it for the right reasons. Um, Kirk Cameron, actually, and I'm going to see, I'm going to actually see if I can't get him to come on the show maybe and talk to me about this a little bit. He just did um, on his show Takeaways on TV and he just had a model, a former model turned missionary, two of them actually, talking about um, what the world says versus what God says about how we view ourselves. And so that's, I guess, the direction I would I would steer you. I would say, hey, if this is something that you're like, you know what, this would help me. I don't know. If it's going to really help you through confidence, I see no reason not to do it. I just think there are some areas, just like me with my teeth, you know, um, I wasn't really sure, am I going to be glad I did this? Every single day when I see that, you know, and when I smile, I'm happy that I did it. Uh, and so, but... There are lots of, I mean, you, you've you seen it and you can, all you got to do is search Instagram. We take so much pride and we care, have so much of our identity wrapped up in how we look. And I don't think that it pleased the Lord. The Bible says that, um, that our, our, our beauty is fleeting, but what is, what is the Bible esteem? A woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. As I've gotten older too, in my fifties, uh, shortly before I turned 50, I, I started looking for YouTube videos on, you know, uh, how to take care of your skin over 50, what are some, you know, um, beauty tips for women over 50, just trying to figure out how I can age gracefully. I really would like to age gracefully. And 
the very first thing that this woman said, and I think she's 58 now and she's beautiful. And she said that the most beautiful thing about a woman is her um, smile. It's just that confidence that you give that says, I love other people, that my focus is not on me. My focus is on you. You know, I think it's easy when we're in our teens and our 20s and even our 30s to be focused on ourselves. She said, this is a season of life where you have opportunity to really look outward and, and be a light. And I love that. And this woman's not a Christian. She was just talking about your smile, that confidence that you say, hey, I care about you and the friendliness. You know, here in Hawaii, we were at a, um, uh, we saw a hula dancer the other night and they were teaching us the, the hula, right? And they said the most important part of the hula is your smile. It's your smile. It's what people see about you. So um, I think that's maybe a good place to end the show today. Just to remind you guys, hey, um, smile today. You know, whoever God puts you in, in contact with, remember, these are people that he loves and he loves you. And you can exude that smile and confidence that comes from knowing him and from knowing where you're, where you came from and where you're going. You guys have what the world needs. So thank you guys so much for writing in. Thank you for your questions. We've got a few of them in, in the hopper still. And if, I would love to continue to hear from you. HeidiStJohn.com forward slash mailbox money. Do not forget, please leave reviews for the show uh, wherever they are, wherever you can lead them, particularly at iTunes or wherever my books are. Also, I want to just remind you, brand new study coming up for Mom Strong International. I'm going to be getting back into the driver's seat. So writing those studies again and teaching them, I'm really, really Looking forward to that. And then if you're interested in having me come out and speak for your event, you can do that by going to my website, HeidiStJohn.com and just click on the speaker tab. I hope you guys are having a super great day and aloha from Hawaii. And I will see you back here tomorrow at the intersection of faith and culture. <laughs>